Let's just have a party. <laughs> y'all just look like y'all some people that I want to party with. I don't want to do, okay, I guess we'll do a mixture of both of them. Yeah, we can make this a spiritual party. <laughs> so let's take a breath now and uh, we'll share a little bit to kind of get us in the mood. We'll start out with uh, some questions from the way of mastery. And I'll give you the page we're on in just a minute. That way everybody won't be searching through the book while doing the meditation. yourself, what is your purpose? Ask yourself, why did you come this evening? What is your purpose? Why are you here? 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 What is your purpose? What is your purpose? What is your purpose? What is your goal? What is your purpose? What is your goal? What is your purpose? Why are you here? Holy Spirit, my loving right mind, Holy Spirit, what would you have me say? What would you have me say? Holy Spirit, divine mind within me, what would you have me do? What would you have me do? Ask yourself that. Holy Spirit, what would you have me say? What would you have me do? What would it be like in this moment for you to simply realize that only love is real. What would it be like in this moment for you to simply realize that only love is real? What would it be like in this moment for you to simply realize that only love is real? Only love is real. 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 You need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. 
You need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist, resist. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. You are not asked to analyze the ideas at all. Their use will give the ideas meaning to you and show you that the ideas are true because some of them may be hard to believe and some of the ideas may be quite startling. in part two of the way of transformation. Page 244, part two in the way of transformation in the way of mastery. <clears throat> I'm start off with the paragraph that starts out with uh, part of the journey, <laughs> part of the journey then of the way of transformation is learning to transform your lived experience right toward the bottom of page 244. <clears throat> part, of the, part of the journey then of the way of transformation is learning to transform your lived experience. <coughs> so a transform lived experience would be an experience that you enjoyed more and more and are attached to it less and less and you're not afraid of it at all. There are many in, I like this, there are many in your world who would yet perceive spirituality as a way to get the hell out of the place to which they find themselves. <laughs> not understanding that they can be nowhere save that in their own mind. And as long as there's a desire to get out of where they are, they will remain stuck in it. So there's a difference between trying to, trying to get out of where you are, trying to use spirituality, spirituality in order to get out of where you are, is not going to get you out of where you are. What's going to get you out of where you are is knowing that only love can heal. So what's going to get us out of any fear is love. So if I'm in this, this class and I'm really trying to get out of any situation that I'm in without love, I'm going to stay stuck there. And so therefore the way of healing, which is the way of transformation, requires all of us to turn back to look at our creations to look back into our own mind and to bring love to whatever is coming up out of the desire to be the presence of Christ, which is the presence of the one self, the one love we all share. So if, if a person is going to transform, they have to look at their creations and then look into their own mind and then bring love to whatever is coming up. Now, does this mean that as long as the body lasts, and you find yourself in the world of space, time, and movement, and all the rest, that you will not take the body from one location to another? Because you're trying to do this, does that mean that you won't be moving your body from one place to another? Of course not. Does it mean that third dimensional relationships will not come and go? Of course not. It does mean that you become completely free. Free of what? of the old perception that an attraction to a certain 
relationship is going to add something to you. So transformation means you become completely free of the old perception that an attraction to a certain relationship <laughs> is going to add something to you or the avoidance of a certain relationship is going to keep you safe. Mm -hmm. that, that was a nice little grunt. We got a collective. It was, like, it was almost like a grunt in three-part harmony. You know, there was a low grunt. There was a soprano grunt. There was an alto grunt. Tell you that. That yeah, was really cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, you know, yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> Rather, you begin to be free to let the dance of the three-dimensional, this is what this is, the three-dimensional illusion simply have its day, but it no longer holds power over you. I'm going to let it do its own thing. I'm not going to resist the world. I'm not going to resist the way that the world is. I'm going to let it do its own thing, and I'm not going to look for any relationship to add anything to me, and I'm also not going to avoid any relationship thinking that that's what's going to make me safe. Mm -hmm. Everybody clear about that? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the, the highest state of awareness, then, in which perception has been totally cleansed and purified is a state of awareness, a paradox, as soon as you seek to talk about it. For you will look upon yourself and see yourself as a body-mind with a certain name, living in a certain place, on a certain planet, doing a certain thing. Do you not see yourself as a body with a mind that has a certain name, living in a certain place, on this planet, doing a certain thing? Well, in the very same moment, in the very same field of your mind, you will know that you're not that body, that you're not that name, and that you're not that history, and that you are something more. So even though you see yourself as a body that has a mind, that has a name, that's on the planet, doing a certain thing, when you transform you're going to also know that you're not the body, that you're not your name, that you're not your past, and that you're something more than that. So I know I see myself as Earl Purdy in a body here on this planet teaching tonight, but I know I'm learning to remember at some level that I'm not this body, that I'm not this name, that, and I'm not what this person that seems to be sitting here teaching tonight. I'm more than that, and you are more than that. You're more than a body. 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 You know what really would bring that home if you were to say, yeah. I'm more than a human being. I'm more than a human being. I'm more than a human being. I'm more than you. That's right. You're more than a human being. You are more than a human being. You are more than a human being. <clears throat> you are more than your history. You're not your name. So what is the more that you are? Well, the more that you are is you are something grand. <coughs> you are something divine. Mm -hmm. Even though sometimes you think you have a big behind. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all didn't see that in your book? <laughs> you, you saw it. It's, it's, you saw it. You saw it. You, you highlighted it, didn't you? <laughs> okay. Don't lose your sense of humor. That's what the main thing that all these spiritual books say is we lose our sense of humor and we take it too seriously, and that keeps us stuck. Just like struggling in a quick in quicksand. The more you struggle, the deeper you sink. So the more you're struggling with everything you think is bothering you, the deeper you sink into the illusion of it. The reason why angels fly is because they take themselves so lightly, right? So lighten up, Raj. You know, have you ever had one of those days that your ego told, you know, you had this voice in your mind that just told you crappy stuff all day long, just telling you one thing after another you need to be worried about? you need to be upset about, that you need to be afraid about, that you know. I had one of those days where, you know, my ego was just on steroids. <laughs> you know, where it was just everything it could think of to try to depress me or frighten me, it was doing. You know, and then I remembered, let your ego be an ego. 
That's what your ego does. That's what you hired it to do. You hired it. It's that part of you that thinks fear and conflict and worry and concern is the way you protect yourself and make yourself safe. Yeah. So it's always warning you about things that you need to watch out for or prepare for in order to be safe. It's like we wake up in the morning with the idea that the world has these unknown threats that we've got to protect ourselves against before we even get up and go out there. So I don't try to control my ego. I don't try to humble my ego. I don't try to get rid of my ego. All I try to do with it is not use its advice. <laughs> Stop spending your time trying to, you will not get rid of your ego mm -hmm. by fighting it, humbling it, controlling mm -hmm. it, and the main thing it loves is for you to analyze it and study it. <laughs> so if you're busy analyzing your fears, analyzing your anxieties, analyzing your sense of separation, you're just giving your ego a buffet dinner. It loves people that studies it and focuses in on it all the time is something to battle with. You let your ego be an ego. You know, it's just the part, it's the fearful thoughts you made up to frighten yourself to make you think you were separate from love according to this. And the way you get past it is you tolerate it. You tolerate it. Because when you tolerate it, then you're no longer allowing it to distract you and you're letting it do its thing and you're not investing in it the way you used to. And what happens is the voice becomes softer in the sense that you pay attention to it less and less and less and less and less. And then you listen to your right-minded voice more and more and more and more and more. So the loving voice gets louder and the fearful voice gets softer unless you analyze it and study it and think that your job is to fight it all day. <clears throat> so, then it goes on to say, uh, you are something mysterious. Oh, don't you just love it mm -hmm. when you're around people who are mysterious? It's like you know it's a little bit more to them than maybe you know. They're kind of interesting. You know, some people you know, there are some people I know exactly what's going to happen with them when I'm with them every time I'm with them. What, with me? You know, huh? <laughs> with me? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't call no name. <laughs> I didn't call no names. Now, now, it's hard to know exactly what someone's going to do every time you're with them if they're a consciously evolving being. Yeah. Because a consciously evolving being, they're in a period of self-discovery, so they're always showing themselves something new and you something new, too. So that's not true about you, in my experience of you. Yeah. Uh, people who are totally programmed, mesmerized, hypnotized, focus on what the world teaches them, they are completely predictable. And you've been around them for a while. You know exactly what they're going to do. And you know those people. You have people in your life. You know exactly. They haven't changed in 10 years in terms of the way that they do anything, what they focus in on. Um, so be mysterious, you know? You know, be mysterious because you're always, you're always exploring yourself and you're discovering new things about yourself. <clears throat> You also are something beyond comprehension. Now, you know, plenty of people have told you that. <laughs> a lot of people have already seen you spiritually already. You know. <laughs> At least you're uh, uh, beyond comprehension in the realm of thought. And so you will literally know and feel within the core of your being the truth of both of those. And there will no longer be opposition between what you know and what you feel. <sighs> you would no longer look at the personality and see a schism between it and the nature of your Christ mind, your true mind. For the two will become merged as one. What you know and what you feel will merge and you won't be in conflict. Most people's will is in, they, uh, is in conflict with their feelings. What they want conflicts with what they feel, or what they will, conflicts with what they think they need. And so you will look at the most ordinary events that you experience with your body and see no differentiation whatsoever between that and the kingdom of heaven. Uh, it simply is arising and is literally held in, pervaded by, 
and suffused by the reality that is true always. What does that mean? It means you will know that you are totally free when you no longer feel any obstruction to whatever is arising in the field of your experience. Same thing. It's like if I if I don't I'm free if I don't feel any obstruction to the current political climate. I'm free if I don't feel any obstruction to whatever's coming up in my field of experience. I'm not defending against it. I'm not fighting it. I'm allowing it to come up. Why? Because you will simply see it as another opportunity to say, Spirit, what would you have me say about this? What would you have me do about this? And what would it be like in this moment for me to simply realize that only love is real? I just had this run in with my boss today. What would you have me say? What would you have me do? What would it be like in this moment on this job for me to simply realize that only love is real? I'm having a challenge with my children right now. Uh, what would you have me say? What would you have me do? What would it be like in this moment for me to simply realize that only love is real? I have some financial fears that I'm dealing with right now. Holy Spirit, what would you have me say? What would you have me do? What would it be like in this moment for me to simply realize that only love is real? So he's, we're being told that everything that happens to us all day long is just another opportunity to ask these questions. So that's what you would do no matter what came up, and that would be the end of your defending against it and obstructing it. Everything all day long is just another opportunity for you to ask the divine self what to do. Because that's what we're trying to learn how to do, to turn to that which is the Holy Spirit, our loving right mind, our divine self. That's interesting. So all the things that are happening to me all day are only happening to me so that I'll finally get to the point that no matter what's happening to me, I'll ask Spirit, what would you have me say? What would you have me do? What do you want me to say? Who do you want me to say it to? And this is another opportunity for me to only realize that love is in this moment. I notice it's easier for me to remember this stuff if I'm joined with other people that are remembering this stuff. Yeah. And then when I, like us, like the way we are right now, it's, it's easy for us to sit around and go, hmm, yeah, okay, yeah. You know, then the minute we get by ourselves, that other voice goes berserk. <laughs> and then that's what we're listening to, and we get caught up in it, right? So that's why we are each other's saviors, because the ego cannot fool you when you're joined with someone. As long as there's one other person, at least, and you, that's remembering with you, you will realize the truth about it. So, then you will listen to that voice, you will feel it deep in your heart, and you will simply act on that voice and none other. So why study? The purpose of studying is that the, the way of mastery and the Course in Miracles and every truth book, they're teaching you how the loving right man thinks and how the mind that is fearful and it's what you call wrong-minded thinks so that you can discern between when you're listening to your ego and when you're listening to God. Mm -hmm. If you try to do that on your own, you're going to keep messing up over and over and over again. That's why, that's why you hear me say every time we're together, because I need to remember it as well, Without a spiritual practice, you're just going to be spinning your wheels. Mm -hmm. if, without a spiritual practice, you're just going to be spinning your wheels. You cannot discern between the voices on your own. Because if you were able to do that, you would have total peace already right now. So if you don't have total peace already right now, then your ability to discern on your own is not really clear yet. So, I'm just, so that's the test. All right? So if you know you have no spiritual practice, and I don't mean just saying I'm going to meditate, because all meditate means for most people is they quietly listen to their ego. <laughs> That's all it needs. You're just getting somewhere by yourself with some pretty music and some incense and listening to your crazy thoughts very clearly. And we call it meditation. Because it's still you just listening to what you are telling yourself, if you be honest. 
I'm not saying meditation isn't helpful, but I'm saying the way that the average person does meditate. When they say, oh, I meditate. I was like, oh, Lord. <laughs> the first thing comes to oh, you know, it, oh, I hike. Well, great. You're hiking, but what are you thinking while you're hiking? That's what's going to affect your reality. You love nature. Great. You're looking at an ocean, but what are you focusing in on while you're looking at the ocean? Because that's what's going to affect your reality. Is what, like you said, what you're thinking is what changes your reality. Not just because it feels good to be out in nature. That's great to be out in nature, but it doesn't make you smarter. <laughs> That's right. You, you can be out in nature all day. Don't make you. It doesn't necessarily make you smarter. Learning is what changes things. I've seen people have some of their biggest fights on the hike. <laughs> okay, so, you know, just because you're out in nature doesn't mean you're smarter and wiser. You may feel your oneness with the things around you more, which is beautiful. So don't get me wrong, I'm not anti-nature, you know. I'm saying that what produces a real change in your experience, according to this, is changing your way of perceiving and thinking. So, um, so that's why it says, then you will listen to that voice, you will feel it deep in your heart, and you will simply act on that voice and none others. So I need to know when I'm acting on the voice of love rather than the voice of fear, because the truth teaches that what we call love <coughs> and what we call fun, he says many times it's just a pleasant form of fear. It's fear too, but we like it. Sort of like when you're on a roller coaster. You know, it's fear, but you might like it. You know, or you enter into a, a, enter a new relationship, and you're scared to death of losing it, and you're scared of the time that person may speak with someone else or spend time with someone else. So you're calling it love, but it's just a pleasant form of fear. Mm -hmm. It's just a fear that you like. Or if you have a pleasure that you really enjoy, but then you're concerned about if it will happen again and how long it will last, and can you lose that fun or happiness. That's not true happiness. That's fear that you like. Wow. Wow. And so because we have fear that we like, as well as fear that we don't like, to get rid of all fear, you have to let go of the fear that you like, wow. as well as the fear that you don't like. Wow. And most people see that as a sacrifice, so they're never healed of their fear by spirit because spirit can't just heal the fantasies that you don't like. <laughs> it has to also rid you of the fantasies that you do like because both of them keep you from having pure joy and bliss because they're temporary. Oh God, I gotta get my cage to protect me before I go deeper into this. <laughs> So you will not listen to what other minds think you ought to do when you're transforming. You will simply listen to that one voice. It will not speak to you from, when you say, when you see the word ego, you can always substitute the word fear, <laughs> okay? It will not speak to you from the fear, for there is no judgment. And fear is judgment, and fear comes from judgment. I'm afraid of you because of what I'm judging about you. I'm afraid of you because of the meaning I'm giving you. So my fear is coming from judgment, especially if you're not doing anything to me. Like if we're in here right now and we feel anything other than gratitude and joy to be with each other, there could only be one reason. Each of us are judging right now. And we're all reacting to each other according to the judgments that we're giving each other right now. So it's the judgment that makes us feel separate. The fact is, we're totally in this room together, totally peaceful, focusing on the truth. There should be no reason to be anything but joyful about that. So if we're not, it's because we're either focused on the past, something that happened before we got here, or something that we're afraid might happen when we leave. Uh -huh. We're not being present. 
Because if we were present, we would know we, we were in a room of really cool, mysterious, incomprehensible beings <coughs> that are awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, that's what we'd be doing. We'd be like, oh, wow. Wow. Whoa. Ooh. Because you are mysteries to me, to be absolutely honest. You are mysteries to me. We don't really know each other other than most of us other than the time we put our bodies in this same location uh -huh. to listen to this. Mm -hmm. And we call that joining, but it's not. <laughs> That's what's so funny. Mm -hmm. yeah, a, a lot of different people coming together for their own separate healings is not joining. Because we're in the same physical location doesn't mean we're experiencing oneness with each other. Mm. If that was true, that would be true every time you went to a football game, a movie, or a dance, or anything. Everybody be singing Kumbaya, you know what I'm saying? So just because we're in the same physical location does not mean we are one with each other consciously. But we are one with each other if we share a common purpose at this level. And, and so at that level, we all have the purpose tonight of what? More peace, more love, more truth, more that's, that's the It's the purpose that's joining us, right? What's cool is the answers that we are receiving will work on each one of our individual issues that we think we are dealing with that appear to be different. So what's cool about the truth is that you can apply the truth to anything and it works. So it doesn't matter, because the same truth that solves a financial problem is the same truth that solves a relationship problem, it's the same truth that solves a health problem. The same truth will heal all those different forms. Okay? So you will simply come and go as one unknown by the world. So if you're really doing this pretty good, you're pretty much unknown by the world. So if right now you're pretty unknown by the world, right on. <laughs> you're doing great. All right? And he says, yet no one who looks to be very ordinary Yet one who looks to be very ordinary, one who looks to be the same as everyone else. So actually, the more you wake up spiritually, it's possible that the more ordinary you will want to look and the more you actually want to blend in and be unnoticed and unseen because I personally love the ultimate freedom of being unknown. And I've been so successful. I'm pretty much completely unknown by the world. And then the people that need to know about me, they find me. But I'm pretty invisible, you know what I'm saying? It's like I got a really cool group of people in here that I teach and learn with, and then I have several thousand people online that I teach and learn with. But it's not so many that I attract any attention. So I have more than enough people to fulfill my purpose, but not so many that it infringes on my freedom because I could care less about being famous. Mm -hmm. I had my Oprah stage 20 something years ago. Okay, so, uh, now that might not be true for you. You might have a lot of Leo. Oh. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> Your lesson in this life is to be seen and how you handle that. There's nothing wrong with it. If it gives you peace, absolutely not. You know, that's because that's the litmus test, right? If, you, if, if spirit is directing you, and if it's in divine order for you to be famous, you have to be able to handle it in a way that you feel complete peace about it. It won't be uh, something that brings you pain. Mm -hmm. If you're fulfilling your function, the Course teaches that your function and your happiness are the same thing. So if you're truly fulfilling your function, the way you know it is that you feel joy. So that's pretty simple. But it's also depressing to people. Mm -hmm. you know, Because if you're not, then the ego tries to club you about that. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, because you know you're doing something you don't enjoy, that you don't enjoy. But, but here's the kicker. Your enjoyment is never going to come from the thing you're doing anyway. Your enjoyment is going to always come from the way that you're seeing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So don't worry about, let me find the perfect job, the perfect jobs in your mind. Because you're going to be the one determining how you feel about it. 
it's really weird. Like I was working at the phone company many years ago and was moving up the corporate ladder and they were getting ready to promote me again and I wanted to be a teacher and I thought I didn't like what I did, a lot was doing, so I just one day just resigned. They asked me to do something one day and I, t and I called my supervisor I said, hold up just a minute, I'm coming right over. I was, the, I was one of the infamous first blacks. Uh, first black is, is, uh, is the first black to do something. So you become like the first black to get hired by the phone company, or you're the first black that made management, or you're the first, like Obama, what is he? The first black president. So the fir I was the first black, <laughs> and that, that's a really big deal when you're black. And uh, so I was moving up, I was the only one in this position, and I was supervising all of Memphis on certain weekends, keeping the phones running everywhere. Had a lot, you know, I said, wait a minute, but I was miserable, I hated it. I hated it, I'd walk in in the morning, and speak to everybody, go into my office, and fall on the floor and cry. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was miserable. Now, I know some of y'all don't want to do the same thing. Y'all speak to people, you're doing stuff, you know, you really, you know, because I should have stayed in the phone truck being an installer repairman. That was a lot more fit with the Sagittarius. I was in my little truck all day doing my own thing. Nobody else I had to be responsible for, but they got this nasty habit. When you do your job well, they try to give you more responsibility. <laughs> 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 so my point is that, so if I had stayed there, I'd be a millionaire right now. And a nice retirement and social security. No doubt about it, no doubt about it. Every time I got a raise, I lived off of whatever I was making, and I put the raise in the credit union. That's where I lived. And we all know if a person just saved $25 a week for 30 years with compound interest and stuff like that, you would almost have a million dollars. And most people don't even know that, <laughs> especially if you start in your 20s. So I was doing more than that. So I would be like a millionaire right now. But I thought I had to get off of that job in order to have real happiness because I didn't like it, <laughs> right? So I left and I started to do this. And it's great. And I'm glad for the last 29 years I've been doing what I want to do every day. I don't know many people that can say they've been doing what they want to do every day for the last 29 years of their life. But what I realized is if I had to change my mind about the job that I had from the level of consciousness I'm on now, I could have been just as happy there. And I could be retired right now and be happy and have a few million. So my point is... The more you wake up, the more you realize it never was the situation. It was just the way you were looking at it. And there was a way to look at what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I asked the Holy Spirit to really be in charge. There would have been a way to look at that job that I could have done it and enjoyed it without having to make an outer change. Mm -hmm. That you don't ever have to make any outer change. But like it said here, but it's okay if you want to put yourself in a different physical location. It's okay if you want to give yourself a different job. Why? Because you're going to learn the same lesson no matter where you are. So it's nothing wrong with doing what you like, so don't misperceive what I'm saying. If you feel the need to leave what you're doing and do something else, but just don't tell yourself it's because you couldn't have been happy where you were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you couldn't change your mind, so you had to change the physical experience. Because if you can't change your mind, you probably need to do that. You need to change the physical. But if you could have changed your mind, then you wouldn't have had to go anywhere. I, I realize that about my marriage now. I realize that about parenting. I realize that about every area of my life right now. That if I had just changed my mind, I didn't have to leave anything from a perspective of anger, upset, or anything else. I might, maybe you would choose to leave. But you wouldn't be doing it from a perspective of anger mm -hmm. and upset and grievances. And that's why most people leave stuff. Mm -hmm. Not because it, they were enjoying it, but because I'm upset with the way it is around here. Mm -hmm. So I got to get the hell out of here. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that it never was the situation. It was completely neutral. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whatever the situation is, what we're learning, a change of mind could change that situation. But if you can't change your mind, then you might need to change the physical situation. But don't fool yourself into thinking that you had to in order for you to have peace because your peace comes from within. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. You know, so, you know, uh, 
Hindsight is 2020, <laughs> right? You can always look back on something and just have a clear vision of how you should have done it differently. So I realize that now. But I'm so thankful I realized that now. Mm -hmm. Because now I realize it. So it's never too late, mm -hmm. you know. So any questions, any comments before we go to the second observation? <laughs> Some questions. <laughs> Chris! <laughs> My goodness, I'm shocked. <laughs> I know, I've been quiet for so long. I know, I know. <laughs> yes, my brother. So what you just said, yeah. my enjoyment comes from how I'm seeing what I do as a job. So right now where I work, like I have found two different things happening. Like a lot of times, I go in with this mentality that I gotta do my job and I gotta do it just right. And so then I'm like tense and it comes from fear. And so like I'm like, you know, I'm like, ticket. I didn't see your ticket. I'm not having fun. I'm not having fun. But I noticed that when I just <laughs> let myself be me. I'm like more, you know, easy going and I'm like interacting mm -hmm. with the people. But my fear is, and it's based on something in the past, mm -hmm. my fear is, is that I allow myself to be like that, that my superiors are going to be like, well, he's not doing his job and they're going to fire him. Mm -hmm. So if you are joyfully handling your job, then they'll say you're not doing your job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, does that make any sense to you? When you look at it objectively, no. Okay, so you know that's not true. Yeah, they actually probably want you around more. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I got. That's one of the ways I got my promotion was the fact that I didn't give my boss a hard time. I'd actually ask. They, they, some people call it brown nosing, but it wasn't. It was like, first of all, I was I had just got into astrology, and I knew he was an Aries, so I knew he loved to take charge and and be the boss. That was his thing. So I encouraged him to be who he was and ask him how could I be of assistance? Because I knew just like, that if I was a joy for him, especially when my coworkers were hell for him, because every time he had some new rule he had to enforce, they would freak out and, and get mad and get angry and attack him. But I was studying the truth. So I knew that if I exemplified sanity and peace, the contrast between me and them would make him leave me the heck alone and be watching them all the time, which is exactly what happened. They created the, the supervisor that was giving them hell, but they didn't even see it like none of us do. You know what I'm saying? Right. But the fact that I was joyful and peaceful, just like you, then instead of being on the pole in the rain and the snow, bigs and bones, I ended up being the guy in the truck that was watching everybody else do it. Mm -hmm. Just because I practiced the truth principles on my job. That's why it's funny when I hear people go, Earl, it's easy to talk this stuff as long as you're in the class and this is all you do. I do. But once you get out here, it's a whole different, no, but when you get out there, it's even, it's even simpler. <coughs> it's even simpler because they're so predictable. They do exactly what the Course in Miracles and Way of Mastery says that that part of yourself is gonna do. It tells you exactly what a man that thinks it's separate and a victim is gonna do. If these books tell you exactly how they're gonna act, how they're gonna respond, maybe not the exact form it's gonna take, but the exact content. And if you do it, you'll watch your job transform right before your eyes. But most people don't do that because they're in victim consciousness, so they look at everybody's adversaries. And then they act like that. So you, what you're doing is perfect. Well, and if you don't mind me sharing your own, I just got an aha because the reason why I do that is because in the past, I worked as an EKG technician and I was responsible for monitoring people's heart rhythms. And one night I came in and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna be myself and be jovial. And as a result, I missed this guy's battery that died for 10 minutes and he ended up dying, and I still blame myself for that. And, I, and so, me being strict is a, a way to be to punish myself. And I just need to forgive myself. Yes, you, you totally need to forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. And and the fact that you chose to be happy was not what created that. 
The ego would love for you to believe that. That would be such a coup for your ego mm -hmm. to tell, to teach you that being happy is what is harmful. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the course talks about that. It's funny you should say that because it literally <laughs> says that in the book that the ego guilty part of our mind is the part of us that tells us if we if we dare really be happy or grateful or joyful or say, "Wow, my life is going great," the shoe is gonna drop. So, so it's almost like people are afraid to be happy because they think if they are, something bad's going to happen or they're going to, you know, yeah. So the truth is, uh, you're innocent, Chris. And you're being able to share that was part of your healing and your forgiveness for that, you know. Um, nobody, nobody makes their transition without their own consent at a soul level. And that's a hard one for us to get that birth is our choice and so-called death is our choice too. Um, and that gives me more peace. And so um, you didn't do anything. Okay. Okay. So don't be afraid to be happy. <laughs> and don't feel guilty about we feeling love happy. You, Chris. Thanks for sharing, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I, I, I know. I got. I got that same feeling about prom night. <laughs> Some things today I'm trying to overlook about that. So we all got our issues. We all have our secret shames, our secret guilt, the things we don't want anybody to know about what we did. You know, isn't it a trip when you carry around something for a long time that you feel really, really guilt about, and then you share it, and everybody kind of like, really? You know what I'm saying? Like they, they don't react like you think they're going to react and you realize you've been carrying it around for so long and you're the one that's made it the big deal and no one else is. So if it was a mistake, all you can do is say, I'll try to do it differently the next time. I'll try to be more conscious the next That's all you can do. That's all you can do. Um, so taking it a shift back uh, to the meditation mm -hmm. uh, comment. Mm -hmm. So I, I've heard the quote, thought's a wonderful servant, but a horrible master. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it was, it doesn't matter who said it, I think it was Alan Watts. But mm -hmm. he, um, so you're saying that thought shapes your reality. And my meditation, yeah, big deal, but what are you thinking about? It's kind of counterintuitive to me because like, I, I try to meditate and I also don't meditate because I have to be alone with my thoughts at that point mm -hmm. and I'm trying to like let them go by. Mm -hmm. Not to like stop them, mm -hmm. but to be mindful of them. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain meditation practice that you like to do maybe? No, no remember what I said, the, the whole context of what I said. I didn't say that, that meditation in and of itself, it's, it's the same thing. It's, you need to be trained to meditate. You know what I'm saying? There are certain ways that you need to be taught to meditate. That what, what we want to stop doing is making up stuff as we go along kind of thing. That's what okay. I'm saying. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm definitely not saying, <coughs> I'm always saying I'm anti-meditation. Remember what I said is that when the average person sits still, they're just listening to their ego. They're not watching their thoughts go by. They're buying into every one of them. Well, of and course, it, my ego is like you're doing it wrong. That's right, you. well, that's right, that's right. So and so and so because there's so many places in the Course in Miracles in the way of Master that says you know tells you to you know to see yourself as the Christ or to be the love all of that. So I'm not saying I'm saying give give yourself a spiritual practice that's different from making things up as you go along from your ego. And most people don't have discipline enough to do that. They complain all the time, but actually stopping to learn something different and to focus on something different. People are not as interested in the solutions as they are in the problems. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It, people go more unconscious in the class when we start hearing the answers than they ever do than when we're talking about what we're upset about. I've been doing this a long I time, and I see, that all, I see it all the time teaching the course. The minute I start talking about the part of the course that's telling us what to do to get out of, that's when I watch people's eyes roll back in their head the most. 
But as long as you're complaining, talking about what you're upset about and who's disappointing you, like everybody's ready, everybody's energized, but the be quiet because the answer always involves you. <laughs> you know, the answer always involves us having to be different, us having to look at things differently, us taking responsibility, me not blaming, me not attacking. Of course my ego doesn't want that solution. It wants the solution <laughs> where you're going to tell me what somebody else needs to do to make me happy. I'm looking for you to tell me what I need to go outside of myself, who's going to be the person, what's going to be the thing outside of me that's going to make me happy. That's what I'm waiting for you to tell me, but if you tell me my happiness comes from me, that's depressing if I haven't been very successful in being happy. That's why I'm looking for you to do it. <laughs> Because I'm not good at it. So I'm going to meet that person that's going to do it. I'm going to get that job that's going to do it. I'm going to have that class that's going to do it. I'm going to have that book that's going to do it. Because that's a lot easier to use my mind to try to figure out who else beside me need to change. That's the most popular use of the mind. So I'm going to do five more minutes. Uh, questions? If anybody got Just questions me, or comments? Can I make an observation that sure. I had today? Sure, absolutely. For myself, um, going back to the first thing that we you were sharing, um, free of the old perception that you know the attraction to the relationship or or um, the avoidance is going to keep you safe. Like what what is coming up with me with all of this work? And it's it's like it's it's not just hearing your own ego. But listening to that person you chose to be around, <laughs> <laughs> kind of repeating mm -hmm. what is going on in your head, and mm -hmm. it just all of this just comes together. That not only you know thoughts become things, and we create our own reality. But when 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 we were not as aware as we're beginning beginning to become, we chose all of these relationships that really just repeat back what the ego is saying in our head. That's right. And mm -hmm. so we're double punishing ourselves. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's right. It's right. It's, it's almost like I've been, you know, I've been talking about myself, criticizing myself, and judging myself, and not loving myself. So now I need to find somebody to do that with. <laughs> I'm just tired of doing it alone. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go get me a partner. You know, um, it's like I never look at it as if getting a relationship is go is about to simplify my experience. <laughs> no, there's nothing simpler than having a, a solitary life. I'm sorry, it's not. It's, if you love yourself, it's lots of fun. If you're free, it's lots of fun. If you feel, because there's, that means there's no limit on how you can express yourself. So why wouldn't that be fun? But again, if you're not self-exploring, if you're not trying to consciously evolve, then you're gonna put the responsibility for your joy on somebody else. And so you're going to be looking for somebody else to do it for you. But if you're, in a, if you're a solitary being and you're spiritually practicing, you're going to have a pretty peaceful friggin' experience. Mm -hmm. And then when you're ready to take a look at some things that you think you might be hiding from yourself that maybe you need to take a look at to see if you can go beyond them, then you get a burnt relationship. Mm -hmm. Because it's just going to make you aware of whatever part of yourself that you might be in denial about. So to get in a relationship and think somehow or another that's going to make things easier at first is funny. Because <laughs> y'all know that's not true. Yeah. If y'all over 15 years old, you know that's not true. Uh -huh. But this was the one. Uh -huh. uh, this job is the one. Uh, this, this is Denver. That's, that's, it's in Denver. That's where it is. It is in Denver if I'll be true to myself in Denver, if I'll practice the truth. I, every, I could have a great relationship with everybody in this room. Simply because I'd let you be. I wouldn't be trying to get you to act out my script necessarily. So I could get along with everything. I want to use you for truth. I want to use you to remember about God, remember about love, remember I'm responsible, remember we're free. You can use everybody for the truth. So it wouldn't make any difference who you were with if all you wanted was God and the truth. But if you have a need, that you've made up you have, then I'm not going to necessarily be the person you're going to be attracted to. You're going to be attracted to the person that you think is going to meet the need that you think you have. And that's why we single people out. We single people out because of the special needs we think we have that they can meet. Mm -hmm. That's why you choose one person over another one. But if I want to remember that I create my reality, like he just said, 
Everybody in this room could be another opportunity for me to say, what would you have me say, God? What would you have me do, God? What would it be like in this moment for me to simply realize that only love is real with every one of you? So love, I can love all of y'all, but I can't do the same thing in the body with all of you because that's where the ego comes. That's where your specialness comes in is all the body stuff. You just do body stuff with special people because it's not real. Anything that's real is always something you can do with everybody. Something that's unreal is always something you can only do with special people. That's too easy, isn't it? That's freaky, isn't it? Yeah, the mere fact that I only do it with you means it's unreal. <laughs> yeah, because anything that's real is available to everybody. That's what makes it real. Nobody's excluded. <laughs> so we mean it when we say we want to have an unreal time. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I'm going to go out and I want to have an unreal time tonight. Boy, you're going to have a lot of them. And so then people get into, you know, kind of like feeling self-conscious or feeling upset or thinking that it's asked them to make a sacrifice. No, I can take the special person that I focused in on and I can say, this is going to be the person that I'm going to practice these principles on the most. This is going to be the person that I'm going to practice forgiveness the most freeing the most, be showing gratitude the most, taking responsibility for my feelings with the most, supporting them in who they are the most, reminding them of who they are. Why? Because I've singled them out. And the fact that I've singled them out means I actually have someone to practice on all the time. But, we, but those are usually the people we get the most hell. The ones that we have the most demands, the most expectations, want them to act out our script. But actually, you got your own personal practice partner <laughs> that you singled out, and that means they are perfect for you because you singled them out. So you know they're the wrong person. Wait a minute. They're the wrong person in terms of keeping any of your old patterns and attitudes going because they're going to be the one that you're going to have to practice the truth on to truly have the happiness that you want to have with them. That's why they were chosen. They are your teacher. They're going to give you a chance to practice everything we're reading. They're going to teach you the things you don't want to learn. And, and, if you, and, if you, and if you get, and if you're really growing in awareness, you'll go, and they're going to teach me the things I really want to learn. And I'm going to join with them, and I'm going to set the purpose with them that we're going to use our relationship to learn the things we really want to learn. And I'm not going to leave that to chance. I'm not going to hope that person wants to grow spiritually. I'm not going to hope that they want to re recognize that they're more than their bodies. I'm not going to hope anything. I'm going to have a conversation. This is really what I want. This is what I believe relationships are for. Is this something that you want to do? Or if I bring up the thing that I value the most, are you going to ridicule me, laugh at me, and try to block me from doing that? I'm not going to take no chances on that stuff, hoping they're going to be a certain way, when you could solve all that in a simple conversation that's honest and open. Mm -hmm. It's insane how people do that. I hope they're into what I'm into. Just tell them. Why would you hide who you are from the person that you love? That proves that you don't love them right there. Mm -hmm. You're scared to death to tell them that you're into the way of mastery? That's something that, you, that, that doesn't mean they have to get into the way of mastery. Maybe their spiritual path is different. But why are you afraid to share what you're into with the person that you say is your partner? The person that you're loving? The person that you care about? That y'all supposed to be building something together? That's why books like this drive us crazy. Mm -hmm. Because they reveal to us the games we're playing with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we want to stay in denial about the games we're playing with ourselves. But it, it's always going to say, communicate, mm -hmm. communicate, communicate. Oh my God, but if I communicate, they might leave me. If they really know where I'm coming from, they're going to say, I'm weird. What the hell are you doing with them then? That, that's your, all you need to know. That that's a distraction for you. You can't join in purpose. Or, or the ego puts another really good one. It says, uh, I like this one. Well, I know this is the wrong person in the sense that we never have peace and conflict and we have nothing in common. But if I just change my mind, <laughs> all I got to do is just study for both of us. <laughs> and then it's going to change. But I change my mind, then they're going to change. I like that one. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a real good one. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, right, 
Right. Yeah, you can give yourself peace with them exactly as they are. You're right. You could give yourself total peace with that person not being into what you're into at all. But if you're having a hard time giving yourself peace about somebody taking your parking space, you might not be there yet. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you really want, are you really ready to be so enlightened that the person that you are with you can so totally accept them exactly as they are to the point that you never give your peace away even though they seem to be completely different from you in every way. That's possible. Mm -hmm. That's awesome mm -hmm. if you can pull that off. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I don't want to spend my time all the time with somebody I can't do nothing with, no time to talk about nothing I like with. That's me. I'm not there yet. I, you gonna be, we're going to be in a relationship. Let's do something together. Let's share something. I don't want to be with you living two separate lives and you can't do nothing with nobody else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so crazy. We don't do nothing together, but if I do something with somebody else, I'm cheating on you or you feeling jealous or you wondering if I'm with somebody else. So that's hell. At least if I was single, I could see somebody else. But if I'm in a relationship and we don't do nothing in common, but we can't see anybody else, what kind of fun is that? <laughs> What's the point? But I see it around me all the time. Mm -hmm. I've done it. <laughs> because my body needs to be with another body. And as long as that body is there under the same roof, I think I'm in a relationship. Mm -hmm. But a real relationship is communication. Yeah. Mm. So you don't ever have to agree with everything that I'm saying. If, if you had to, then I shouldn't be sitting in front of the class. <laughs> but I'm just sharing. Because people make relationships to me much more complicated than they have to be. Just let each other be. <laughs> That's the secret. That <laughs> they were not created to validate you and to make you feel important. But they can so support that in you by appreciating you and acknowledging you. But that's not their job. That comes from your relationship with source. And the minute you're okay with you, everybody else will be. There'll be more people interested in spending time with you than you could ever, ever get around to. You couldn't even keep up with all the people who wanted to spend time with you and do things with you and be loving with you. Ah, I'm so glad I finally discovered the easy way. Leave everybody else alone and just change my mind. Oh, that's wish I had discovered that a long time ago. Oh, God, I wish I had discovered that a long time ago. Mm, mm, mm. But that all happened in the perfect time, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes I'm gonna get enlightened, then I'm gonna die. This right next day I'll be so old, like, I'm, like oh, I'm finally free. <laughs> 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 because if you're feeling good on the inside, because you know you're not your body, like right now on the inside, I don't feel any different than I did when I was 18 years old, and you don't either. You could go further than that. You could say when you were 10 years old. So I think when you start to love yourself more and you begin to have peace and you see yourself as innocent, you're going to feel good on the inside, right? But your body is still going through its cycle, and it's going to ultimately be dropped. That's just the way it is. This is the world of beginnings and endings. You can't get away from around that. That's the way it is here. So I really realized one day that a lot of times when people die, quote, unquote, they were feeling fine. Yeah. Their body just gave out. And what you, I, you, you always kind of think that it's going to happen because you feel like you're deteriorating in some way. And then you deteriorate to the point that you go, oh, okay, my body's finally worn out. And No, actually, if you're not your body, you could be in a state of total peace because you're eternal. And your body, though, does go through the cycle of beginning and ending, and it could just get to the point, just like a car, you know. Like, I don't still have my first car, but the being who drove it still exists, yeah. right? So this is your car. And like any car you've had, it's going to get to a point that you're not going to use it anymore. It's going to have done its thing. But you will still be completely conscious being alive. You're not your body. You're free. And so we could be enjoying this thing, right? But, no, but then we don't because we make up ideas like guilt and sin. Mm -hmm. So instead of enjoying our physical experience, we're constantly judging ourselves for the things that we do in our body. So not really letting ourselves experience it in any way, it's kind of like a really cruel game that we made up. You're only in it for a little while, 
-hmm. And then you spend most of your life judging and condemning yourself about it rather than enjoying it. Mm. So please enjoy your bodies. Mm -hmm. Use it for love and peace and healing. You're not guilty. <laughs> Chris, you're not guilty. Let's see what else cool little light stuff do we have to take a look. I love these light classes that I do. <laughs> 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 So, what was depressing or upsetting out of anything you just heard? I'm just curious. I'm always curious to see how people are interpreting what they're hearing. Because if you heard that any other way other than you're free and you're innocent, and you got a right to live your experience like you want to, connected to source, then you didn't hear what I said. Mm -hmm. Well, I do find that very light. I though it takes me a moment in the depth, mm -hmm. I find it really ultimately very freeing. And so when you said, oh, I love all of these light, light classes that I do, and kind of, I interpreted that kind of sarcastically, um, I think it is very light. And Good. So, and I, and I, That's the way I feel about it, Paris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, this stuff turns me on. I love, I guess I'm so much of a control freak that I love anything that tells me I have some control over what's happening to me and I'm not a victim of everything and everybody. To me, that's a turn off. Mm -hmm. if, you got, if you're one of those people that wants to have any kind of control over your experience, this is good news. Mm -hmm. For me, it's good news. Oh, you mean my happiness comes from me? That I could be happy in any situation. I could be happy whether I had a relationship and I could be happy if I don't have. I could be happy if I had money and I could be happy if I don't. I could be happy in Denver and I could be, see to me that sounds like good news. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could be going, I could, I could do things and not have to feel guilty about it if I'm not doing anything that's physically harmful to anyone and we're all taking complete responsibility for that experience. There's no limit to what I could allow myself to enjoy. Mm -hmm. That sounds good to me. Oh, I mean spiritual doesn't mean you have to be broke and poor and don't have anything and somehow another being spiritual means that you can't have nice things in the world and somehow another that's not cool. I, I love the freedom that these books are giving us. You mean, I, you mean uh, since I'm getting older, it's good for me to know that I'll keep on existing even after old Earl's body is gone, even though he tried to take it out a few weeks ago, but this one, I was too guilty to die, that's what happened. So, <laughs> it's like the boy said, you ain't getting off that easy. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you ain't going nowhere yet. <laughs> Remember prom night? Well, anyway. <laughs> so I'm sorry, you're too guilty to die, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> you got some more lessons to learn. <laughs> Thank you. And, and I'm also getting, I'm like really, for one of the first times, getting the simplicity of everything that you're sharing, in that it's re kind of revolving around like everything is neutral. It's up to me how it is that I'm responding to it. There's only one problem. And, and, and just sort of like these puzzle pieces coming together yes. that feel pretty radical. Thank you. Mm. It, it says that you're, you're, he calls it your learning becoming consolidated. Oh, that's totally how it feels. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, me too. I'm all consolidated. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Okay. It's funny. Yeah, you know, you know, it's like, anybody who's having any consolidation going oh, yeah. in, they kind of yeah. begin yeah. to really yeah. see the common elements of everything uh -huh. and yeah. Yeah, have you noticed that the common element is you? <laughs> I'm the common denominator. I'm actually the common denominator in every relationship and every situation that I was there. So maybe, just maybe, what happened in all my relationships in my life have something to do with me. <laughs> so you're free. of the mind, not of the body. Freedom is of the mind, not of the body. The body can never be free. The body can never be free. The body is limited. The body is limited. There's only so much the body can do. But y'all can't stop me from thinking anything I want to think. I can do anything I want to you in my mind. Minds are free. Bodies are not. 
and, and you can never be alone. Whatever you're into, whatever you value, whatever you believe, I guarantee you there's somebody else that's on that same wavelength as you. And there's nothing to do with your age or your sex or your race or anything. If you let go of all that stuff, it can get to you faster. Being prejudiced limits your options. Suppose you could like people of every race. That's a lot more people you could be cool with. You know what I'm saying? That's awesome. I like the look. Don't you like variety? Anybody else? Yeah, I just had a comment about what she was saying. Mm -hmm. I study physics, and uh, no such thing as creation or destruction only change. That's right. Duality only exists in our perception. It's not a real thing at all. And I love that. I love how science and <coughs> physics and all that stuff is just all coming together saying the exact same thing. You know what I'm saying? And so what, what would happen then if we welcome change instead of always trying to defend against it? Because that's what's going to happen anyway. So I'm trying to be okay with change. So what, what does that mean? That means if I'm in any kind of relationship with anybody, if they decide to change, I try my best to be okay with that as I can possibly be. Because that, you can count on it. I can count on change, but the truth doesn't change, <laughs> which is the paradox of it. The truth doesn't change, but all of the forms and the way that it expresses does. And that's why we don't have, ever have to be bored. Mm. So the content never changes, but the form does. The content doesn't change. Love is the only thing that's real. And then everything else changes because it's the various ways that it can express itself. And that's the fun of it. You know? If you will let people be and nurture them in who they are, they will enchant you forever. Because when people are not afraid they will reveal themselves in ways you never could imagine. But they don't feel judged and they feel safe. Mm -hmm. People will show you stuff that will blow your mind because all of us are so unique as, as, as expressions of the light. There's nobody else like you. So stop acting like everybody else. So I can see that gift you have to offer. That's what I mean by the cookie cutter people. It's like, come on now. There's nobody else like you in the universe. Don't try to act like everybody else. Who are you? Let me see it. Let's experience it. That'd be fun. You'll never be bored. Mm. I make my biggest mistakes when I'm bored. Well, I don't know about y'all. That's when I make the biggest errors in my life, when I got bored. And then I was like looking for something for excitement. <clears throat> Think about it. When you're bored is when you you're just looking for something. So what, so what do most people do? <laughs> they create drama rather than be bored. Yeah. That's why you see so much drama. People are bored, but their lives are boring. And so how do they? How can they keep drama going to have some excitement? Well, let me get a relationship that I'm always dealing with all the time. <laughs> oh, that's what I'll do. I'm broke again. What am I going to do? How am I going to pay my bills? If you fulfill your function, you'll be given everything you need to stay. That's the promise. If you fulfill your function, you'll never go without. <laughs> mm. So last little sentence here. I think I'd like to leave on something besides something I see. <laughs> I think I'd like to wind it up with wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know for you, but for me, sometimes it's a long time between Tuesdays and Sundays. Because I really enjoy you all so much. And so I miss you. <laughs> you all are fun. <laughs> and you're cute. And you're sweet. And we've been together for lifetimes. We can't get away from each other. We try. <laughs> we find each other anyway. 
<laughs> and our bodies are not fooling us. We just keep changing bodies. Whole cities and civilizations incarnate at the same time over and over again. That's what I hear. <laughs> 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 so when you wake up, you will simply come and go as one unknown by the world, and yet one who looks to be very ordinary, one who looks to be the same as everyone else. The difference is that though the body would still seems to walk upon the earth, you are literally what? Embracing the earth. And in you, you will know that fear is gone. So you'll be in the world and it'll be like Disneyland because you won't be afraid of anything because you know you cannot be harmed because you are only love and then this becomes an awesome experience that enchants you all the time. It's the fear that makes it something we don't like. But if without fear, this would be a cool place yeah. to visit for a while and try some cool things out. Isn't that right? Yeah. Absolutely. Let's acknowledge us. Holy Spirit, y'all did good. Y'all awesome. Woo. Okay, let's do the financial expression of appreciation. And you are totally appreciated by me. Thank you for sharing. And in my fulfilling my function. Uh, and let me tell you, I, I think leaving that job was a great thing to do. <laughs> yeah, me too. You know, because um, it happened. So it must have been part of the divine plan for my life. You see what I'm saying? If it happened, then it must have been part of the plan. So uh, feel good about yourself and what you're doing. But online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, just go to my website, earlpurdy.com. earlpurdy.com. And I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one sessions called Clarity Sessions, where we take whatever the issue is in your life that you'd like to see differently, and I work with you on seeing it another way. And if you're open and receptive to it, then I also use my knowledge of astrology and numerology for the same purpose, putting you in charge in relationship to God. And you didn't come here without a road map. You had an intention. It'd be good to find out what it was, make things easier for you. And remember, all that you give is given to yourself. That's what DeCour says. All that I give is given to myself. Giving and receiving are the same. Um, so thank you, God. We're sustained by the love of God. We're sustained by the love of God. So go to my website, and it explains everything about the clarity session. Whew. Thank you for all the incredible emails and comments that I've been receiving, and especially lately. I feel so blessed. Isn't it a trip? God's always blessing us. The universe is always blessing us. We are the kink in the holes. It's, it's, you know, it's like God does not give any of us special favor. We're all receiving all of the love, all of the abundance, all of the joy. But it's our capacity to receive that sucks. You know, all those ideas and beliefs we have that it's not okay for us to receive. But that's why what Chris said was so powerful to me because there's a part of me that has that same, exact same belief you have that uh, if I let myself really and truly be completely happy, you know, I, I see that ego part. Like we said, just watch it. You know, if I let myself be completely happy, then something's going to happen. Yeah. I don't deserve that, you know. And so it's there. I let it talk, and then I still go ahead and do the things that I believe that are centered in joy and happiness. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't spend another day trying to fight your ego. You know, you you upset right now. You're just upset right now. You're sad right now. You're just feeling sad right now. You happy? You know, can I stop making such a big deal out of feelings you've been having all your life? Yeah. Is this the first time you've been depressed? <laughs> Is this the first time you've ever been angry? Mm -hmm. Or the first time you ever felt lonely? Think about it. None of those things are new. None of them are. But each time they come up, we act like this is the big one. Like this, this is the one. This is the one. This is the one that ends all the. I know the rest of them wasn't real, but this unhappiness. Now this is the one that's gonna take me out. You know. Then we then we get in the habit of it. Mm -hmm. 
and then it just becomes a, the way our personality works. It be, actually becomes our personality. And then you wonder why nobody's trying to spend time with you. You are down there. It's not really complicated. <laughs> You're no fun. <laughs> but there are people who love depressed people who have lots of problems because it takes care of their caretaker energy. A lot of people get their sense of validation by fixing others, and so they'll be completely attracted to you with all your issues. Because the universe takes care of all your needs. So even if you're one of those people, There'll be somebody that'll want to invest in you. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. So even if you're dysfunctional, you will attract somebody else that's dysfunctional <laughs> in a way that helps your dysfunction. You know, the victim has the caretaker person. Isn't that great? Yeah. You know, you, you're in a no-win situation. You're in a no-lose uh, teaching now. You're, you're on a path of no loss. No matter how much you try to screw, it'll get to the point when you study this long enough that even if you try to mess up, it'll still turn out to your advantage. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what you do, it'll turn out to your advantage. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You know, it's, it's, it, 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 the universe is set up for you to win. It's not set up for you to lose. It's set up for you to win. I was talking to somebody the other day, they were completely depressed, they were like upset, they were like sad, they were like crying, they were like, and they were naming one thing after another that had happened that was wonderful. Yeah. And they were, they were freaking them out that they could still feel so upset and unhappy when they had seen every change we had discussed happen to their benefit. And that's what's so cool, because the once you have everything flipped, and all of a sudden it's the opposite to what it used to be and you still feel unhappy, that's when you know it really is in your own mind. So that's the most, that's actually the best moment possible on the spiritual path. Because at, at that point you really get, beyond a shadow of a doubt, your happiness, your unhappiness has never been caused by anything outside of yourself mm -hmm. because even when everything outside of yourself seems to be the way you want it to be, you'll find in yourself still depressed. Mm -hmm. it, that's the way it always was. But you just used to create enough drama to fool yourself into thinking that your unhappiness was being caused by the thing outside because you were such a good drama king or queen. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden you get in this stuff and it begins to fade away yeah. and you notice that you're still making yourself feel unhappy, and you have absolutely no reason to. And then that's when the breakthrough happens, because you really get it never was anybody else, so there's nobody to forgive. And that's the awesome moment. Okay. All right, I'm going to end on the questions. Ah, here we go. The Course in Miracles and the Way of Mastery, these are paths of relationship. These teachings are primarily for people who want to use relationship as a tool to enlightenment. And the, and the purpose of relationship is to save you time. The purpose of a relationship is to save you time. So if you would like to have a relationship in your life that you feel brings you peace, just set the goal to use the relationship for sanity and peace. I'm not saying you can't have it, it's saying get clear about what you want it for. What do you want it for? What do you want it for? What do you want it for? Whatever it is, ask yourself, what is the purpose? What is it for? 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 What do I want to come of this? What is the purpose? What do I want to come of this? What is the purpose? What do I want to come of this? What is the purpose? Because the purpose the goal determines the outcome.
The goal determines the outcome. The goal determines the outcome. All relationships are neutral. Everything in the world is neutral. Everything in the world is neutral. Everything in the world is neutral. But you have no neutral thoughts. You have no neutral feelings according to the Course of Miracles in the Way of Mastery. You have no neutral thoughts. You have no neutral feelings, but everything is neutral. It's an event. You're the one that's giving it the meaning. So all you have to do is give everything in your life the same purpose, the purpose of peace, the purpose of awakening, the purpose of your freedom, the purpose of joy, the purpose of healing. And it teaches that if you see the purpose of the world as your healing, the undoing of any fear and guilt in you, then everything in the world will start to serve that purpose for you. Everything will start to serve that purpose of healing and happiness for you. Just be clear about what you want. You want the peace of love, which the course calls the peace of God. So don't try to avoid it, and at the same time, don't think it's going to ultimately add to who you are, because you are whole and complete. There is nothing, nothing missing in you. You are sensational. You are divine. You are grand. You are divine. You are mysterious. You are something beyond comprehension of any mind. You are literally an unlimited, gorgeous, light being. And you are a blessing to everything and everybody on this earth. companions may the course be with you let's acknowledge us for being the juicy awesome beings that we are hugs are available and new foods see y'all <laughs>